Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Safety Systems. For nearly 20 years, Safety Systems has been protecting East Tennessee homes and businesses, residential and professional. They have the best equipment and they offer terrific monitoring services. Folks, best of all, they are local. They're right here in East Tennessee. You got a VFL, you got two VFLs now on the staff over there at Safety Systems. When you call them, you're calling a Knoxville number. When you have an issue, Knoxville people deal with the issue. Safety Systems, go local. Go safety systems. All right. Let's take a look here very quickly. I want to run through the targets <laughs> since 2008. A lot of red X's there. But just going to briefly, I'll throw out what I remember, and, and Jimmy, I'll let you chime in, fill okay. in some of the details. Tell me if you agree or disagree. Troy Calhoun, these are in alphabetical order. Troy Calhoun Air Force. They, they actually liked him yep. as kind of the number two. Mike Hamilton liked him as the number two to Lane Kiffin. Then they went back the next year, and it was kind of like, well, you didn't offer me. Correct the year before so and the timing was bad too timing yeah. was bad with the whole that that kiffin when, when he left mm -hmm. and the fact that you were going to have two roster turnovers mm -hmm. in two years span that, that drove people away next was david cutcliffe he had said if you call me he told that's when you had a split group doing the mm -hmm. search that was the post kiffin deal hamilton was doing part of a search and then you had some boosters doing part of the search i think condridge was on a plane doing some of this stuff um he told him, if you call me by this time, I'm your coach. And Mike Hamilton didn't call him, from what I understand. Is Here's that what true? I, he, and David Cutcliffe told me this himself. He said, if I go to bed Thursday night as Duke's coach, I'm waking up Friday morning as Duke's coach. And, and Mike Hamilton had not interviewed Kippy Brown yet. And he was interviewing Kippy Brown on Friday at 3.30. And so that was kind of his out, because I don't think Mike Hamilton wanted to hire Cutcliffe anyway, because he felt like he was too closely associated with Philip Fulman. Who just fired, yeah. And, and the other thing there is, in terms of giving Kippy Brown an interview, you also had two boosters who were on their plane cutting the deal with Derek Dooley in yeah. Ruston, Louisiana. That's At the right. moment, you're doing the fake sham interview with Kippy Brown. That's right, because you'd already hired Derek Dooley right. before you interviewed Kippy. There we go. Now let's go back to the <laughs> list. Derek Dooley, who we just mentioned, that was a panic move to save the recruiting class. I'm telling you, people, if anybody ever says, save the signing class, no, no, find a good coach, and it won't matter. Find a good coach. Mike Gundy, Tennessee went after Mike Gundy. Uh, he turned down more money to stay put. Yeah. Most coaches, if you got it running, rolling where you are, you're not going to leave a Power 5 school. He interviewed, Tennessee interviewed him at his home, and uh, they thought they had a good shot at him, but it turned out Gundy was using that as a power play against the most influential booster at Oklahoma State, Boone Pickens. Yeah. And so he got some of what he wanted because Tennessee made an offer. And still makes less than Butch Jones. Uh, then you got John Gruden, ex-NFL coach. A lot of people say, well, that was a done deal until the Haslam's canceled it. That's about 180 degrees wrong. Yeah, I would say baloney, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they talked to him. It was never serious because of, he didn't he didn't take it serious. Didn't he call Ron Zook, as I recall, and and ask? And that's when Zook told him the twenty hour rule and all that stuff, and it freaked him out a bit. It, it was Zook, and yeah, that was one of the ones he talked to. Yes. Okay. Uh, then you had Lane Kiffin. That was a bad decision, but yeah. you also had bad luck involved there too. If Southern Cal doesn't cut open, who knows? Will Muschamp. We already mentioned that. You went after him when he was Texas assistant. He said no thanks. Gary Patterson, TCU. If I recall correctly. They had a meeting with him set up, and he just no-showed them. That's what I understand. It was a meeting in the Dallas-Fort Worth airports, one of those, and he uh, did not make it for whatever reason, and he got, well, there's a big red X. That's what happened. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. I'm guessing he wouldn't be on any list this time around after that. Chris Peterson, Boise State, they made a run. They did, and a lot of people were making runs at him. He just was – I didn't think he was going to leave Boise State. He kept turning a lot of people down, and finally – he said yes to Washington. Stayed in the Pacific Northwest. He though. did. I don't think he wanted the cutthroat SEC. There were also rumors that people had concerns about his religious affiliation when he was that there were some people who were concerned. Scientologists, maybe. Same with uh, Whittingham because he's a Mormon. Mormon, which we'll get to him in a second. Yeah. Let's let's leave it here. Bob Stoops. It was a call made to him, and he said, "I'm not interested." It was just a quick call. I mean, it, that was a guy that you would have thought was a surefire deal, but. Are you interested? No, no thanks. I like it at Oklahoma. That's it. So you move on. But but there was an attempt to see if he had an interest. And he said last week, by the way, that he's not going to coach again. So people aren't believing that. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. He doesn't mean it. But he says he's out. And then the last two, Charlie Strong at Louisville, you had him, and then you flew back to Knoxville without him, and he changed his mind. And then finally Kyle Whittingham at Utah. And uh, one of the things I was told was when you went back to him post-Kiffin, it wasn't Hamilton that saw him, and he was a little upset that, well, then why am I not? Well, if I'm so important, how come I'm not meeting with the AD? That's what I was told. Do you remember that or not? I don't know that story. Okay. All right. Um, 
So when you talk about offering money and then being cheap and shopping at the bargain, it's not true. You know, people say the same thing in basketball. That's not true either. In 1994, Doug Dickey tried to hire Roy Williams for Kansas, offered to make him the first college basketball coach making a million dollars a year. All right? Kevin O'Neill was the hottest name in the country. He was Bruce Pearl when they hired him. So that's what Jamie Dixon, Sean Miller, Brad Stevens, Tennessee reached out to all these people. They knew they were going to have to pay to get them. And they all said no. So now if your idea is, well, just pay them $40 million, pay them $60 million. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, but they have been shopping at the front line. Maybe they're not good closers. Possible. We've discussed that many times over the years. But the money thing, I'm just tired of hearing it because it's just not true if you follow the facts. Facts matter. <laughs> no alternative facts. Facts. <laughs> All right, we'll see you on the other side of this break. We'll tell you what uh, some fans replied on Twitter polls regarding UT's coaching situation. Come on back.